Okay. So we got Mage King and Ice versus Drug Fox and MACD. I um, was not overly impressed by Mage King and Ice in their last set. Um, I think it was mostly Ice messing up and getting himself killed like a lot. Um, I think when Ice plays with like Armada, and especially or you know with other people, I see a lot of times Ice being the more support role, and Mage King definitely a player who only plays support. Is this a hand warmer or is this real? Probably a hand warmer. Okay, yeah. Well, I can talk about... I have lots to say about um, pretty much every player on the screen, actually. Yeah, all four of them. So let's start with Drug Fox. Um, Drug Fox, as uh, his school of thought in Melee, is definitely the players who tend to be the worst at doubles, meaning uh, like super optimal players who have laid out all their punishes and singles, rely on grabs a lot, tech chases, chain grabs, those kind of things. Um, those players tend to suck at doubles. Um, Drug Fox read my, uh, at least my beginner's guide to, to doubles, teams 101, and then I noticed that he had a significant improvement, and it seemed like I would call him a good doubles player after that. This was about a year ago. Um, however, at Evo, Sleep PK, and Drug Fox lost to two, like, unranked people from, like, Oregon and Washington, and... Being unranked in a really fraudulent region means you're really bad. And uh, I, I stayed with one of those guys, so I know he's, like, not very good. We just, she just laughed about it that, you know, they beat a, a real team and they're not even, you know, top thousand players in the world or whatever. <laughs> okay, Mac D, he's a uh, people who everyone says is really good at doubles. Um... Definitely the opposite of Mewtwo King. Despite his character, Mac Deese is like a really uh, bullying player. He really asserts himself on the screen. He creates a lot of chaos. And, you know, spams down smash, and it works a lot of the time. You can see right away Mac D running at Mewtwo King there and double nairing, um, which actually kind of cost him a little bit because he could have punished uh, he could have punished Ice for up smashing. If he were closer to his teammate, he would have been in position to punish the lag on Ice's moves. But still, Mewtwo Mac, he's one of those people who makes it really easy to team with him because he puts in so much work himself. Definitely not typical of a floaty player in doubles, but I talked to him about it, and uh, he explained to me, you know, the cost of losing the neutral as a floaty in doubles is a lot lower. So he thinks it's, like, not bad for his character to approach, even though, you know, his character is slow and stuff. He thinks, you know, he just if he goes in and he gets hit, it's, it's not the end of the world, whereas, you know, it can be really costly for a fox to get opened up. Ice, uh, not trying to team Ledge Guard there. I can see it going either way. I would have done what Ice did as well. Um, trying to retreat and not get cornered by the Invincible Fox is uh, the right idea. But I could have seen it going either way. Because the, the Peach, you know, was, like, right there. Drug Fox and MACD playing really far apart. Um, and not getting anything out of it, <laughs> I'll say at that. Oh. Okay, that's one of the situations. If you see Ice there and you know he's going hit to the, hit the ground, you, you should read Miss Tech. He got hit like six times in the air in situations where he probably hit the trigger, you know, one of those times which will lock him out of teching for, uh, what is it, 40 frames? I think it's 40. Um, because if you input a tech, it buffers a tech for 20 frames, and then the next 20 frames after that, you can't input another one. So, yeah, and in, in doubles, uh, Watch out for those situations where people get hit before they hit the ground, and you can read that they're going to miss the tag. It happens all the time. Um, really really close match, despite uh, my criticisms of how Blue Team was positioning. One thing is that when people hit Sheik off stage in doubles, they always end up doing things that aren't going to result in her getting killed. As in, if you, if you don't properly zone out the Sheik's teammate, when she upbees on stage... From the ledge, you can't really uh, get your juicy move that'll kill her. So, like, you really need to keep the support away. If, uh, like, right there, Ice was just feeling himself fighting Drug Fox, so he uh, he wasn't ready to try to help Mewtwo King, but he could have, and he could have saved him. So, like, be wary of ledge hogging right away when you're uh, nice back. Good, good ledge guard on Mewtwo King. A situation where going off was really safe because uh, the other teammate was nowhere nearby. But yeah, yeah. Led, ledge hogging, like, as soon as you hit Sheik off, it's almost, like, invariably terrible. It's just 
tends to be really bad. Okay, I like that by Droid Fox. Not a just giving up the ledge from Mage King and running away. Definitely a situation where, yeah, they, they could get something off challenging him there, and he wasn't really in a position to, you know, gimp them. Meaning, like, what, what I mean is that if Meteor King's teammate is dead and the teammate isn't going to be, you know, isn't nearby, you, if one player ledge hogs him, he's pretty, you know, he's going to be in a hard situation. You can steal a ledge from under Sheik. The thing is, you just have to be ready for, you know, his uh, ledge hop fair re grabs and stuff like that. that that's the mix up. Oh, Meteor King again going high with the back air. Meteor King, um, reading the smart high recovery both times because going high is just better in doubles generally. But if you read something that's better, you can often punish people for it. Wait, this is losers semifinals? They they haven't had winners semis since uh, I, that's kinda weird. Fuck, did they, they did they skip that? Did I miss that? I went I started really far back in the stream. Oh well. I'll figure it out after this. We'll know after this set. Oh. Or we actually, god damn it. Maybe the overlay is just wrong. Because usually they start with losers top 8, and uh, they are they're playing losers top 16 before. Okay, anyway, I shouldn't talk about this. Um, so they pick FD again. Um, Mac D, definitely a player who likes FD a lot. Everyone who plays doubles a lot really likes FD, except me, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, again, no, no surprise that they picked it. They did pretty well, and... Uh, Seems like their strategy is good enough. The thing is, they keep getting these like punish situations, and then they they don't go for double teams, which is a little bit weird. But uh, Dread Fox did manage to just close out the kill on his own. I guess in a Fox you don't have to, you don't need to team punish. You don't stand that much to gain because the uh, punishes are so hard in the singles matchup anyway. Oh wow, great smash yet up from Mewtwo King. Usually you see people smash yet to the side on a. Uh, Fox is up here, but that worked out really well too. Ooh, this game not going quite as well as the last one. Uh, Mewtwo King and Ice just looking too strong. I think the stream lied at this point. I don't. It's not on my end. Oh, great back air by um, Mac D reading the jump of Ice. It's hard to read people's jump timing out of Shine Stall because they get you know so much freedom to time it the way they want. Ice right there. Uh, a little bit of tunnel vision on a ledge guard that wasn't going to happen because of interference from the teammate. But you really, once you hit someone off stage, you really got to look at their partner in the, in the eye, the screen to see, you know, who who you need to deal with. You can't just fight whoever you want or ledge guard whoever you want. There's there's an urgency. There's like needs that you have to uh, you know fulfill. Oh my God, Music King just reading Joy Fox's up B like every time. I mean, I say that, you know, recovering high is good in doubles. Oh my god. Yes, see, recovering high is good in doubles. Ice, uh, from that school player that I was talking about, that Dread Foxes uh, tends to be bad at doubles. Um, definitely should not have gone for the let. Well, not definitely. But, um, he would have been safe if he went high. Safer. Um, I could see why I went to the ledge because, uh, it looked like, you know, the Mewtwo King was on stage and maybe protecting the ledge, but. If you ever played Mewtwo King in doubles, you know when he's shielding, he's not scary. He gets his shield broken all the time. So uh, maybe that's why Drug Fox had the confidence to jump over and ledge on guys. But anyway, um, what I wanted to say was a lot of times, like pretty much every time that Mewtwo King has read Drug Fox's high up B, um, it was in a 1-on-1 -on -one ledge guard situation, which, you know, other options like recovering low and side B are good. It's just, it's bad to do... Uh, you know, the high ledge guards in the situations where you're getting team ledge guarded. Like what uh, Ice was just in. Ooh, Drug Fox, I think, uh, overextending there, trying to run in with a running shine. Uh, honestly, high risk, low reward there. It didn't it didn't pan out. Okay, 2 0. Um, I definitely think that Drug Fox and MACD should be a stronger team than Chillin 2 on paper, but. So Chill and Chew, I guess they just have a good track record and uh, showing that, you know, they, they are as good as these other teams who are getting fourth or fifth or seventh or whatever. I I wonder what adaptations MACD is trying to talk about. I notice he's 
because he's so aggressive. He's not somebody who pays that close attention to like his teammates' positioning. Um, FD again, man. I I don't know. You just lost here twice. There's other good stages like Yoshi's or Dreamland, but I'm sure they want it for a good reason. Just not sure what it is. Dry Fox dying really early there. Pretty unfortunate, but I don't think there's anything Mackie could have done to save him. Oh, that shine and his oh, see that was really good by Ice there. He uh he hits Mac D away at the crucial moment to make sure Mac D couldn't help because uh if Mac D had helped then there's if Mac D had hit him with anything they probably wouldn't have gotten a kill because he's only at twenty percent or whatever, and then he'd still be in a good situation to recover if Mac D nicked him. Oh, so, okay, that was a good gap attack because the teammate wasn't there to you know help him and ended up hitting both of them, but. Oh my god, Ice, that, that up air. Should probably just float farther off the stage. Okay, MACD uh, disrupting the team combo. If uh, he hadn't, then Drug Fox would have gone fared and died, so very important. Uh, good dash attack from each king right there, too. Once somebody hits a launcher, you got to disrupt it right away. Oh, okay. Good uh, UGS combo there, too. Anytime there's like a, a UGS combo into a Fox up air on a floaty, I feel it must feel really satisfying because that move will kill so much earlier than any other option. Ooh, um, Dread Fox uh, running all the way across the stage, ledge guarding ice. I thought it was questionable, but it worked out. Um, you know, Mijiking King upbeat so high, I was thinking, punish Mijiking. King. By the way, if, if you guys didn't know, if, when Sheik upbeats really, really high, she lands with no lag. Like, the move ends. I think uh, Fox's side B is the same way, but that might even have to be even higher because of Fox's fall seed. Oh my god, Muji King just drew... It's really his ledge guards on Drug Fox that have won them the set. Just mercilessly killing this Fox. Look at the Muji King days of old, where he, every time someone's off stage, you just kill them. People at least have bad recoveries. Oh, and then an SD. Oh well, that sucks.